Okay, today we're going to look at an amazing collection of war clubs from the Solomon Islands. Now, the Solomon Islands are an island chain northeast of Australia and east of Papua New Guinea. One of the islands that makes up this nation, it is a nation, is Guadalcanal. And yes, that's the Guadalcanal of World War II fame. They were formerly called the British Solomon Islands Protectorate, not condescending at all, but they're their own country now, and as that former name implies, they obviously have a colonial history. The first contact with European civilization came via Peru by a Spanish navigator named Álvaro de Mendaña de Neira. The natives he ran into were well-armed indeed, so let's start looking at some examples. This is amazing. We basically have a native hardwood spiked flanged mace. The wood was described by Europeans as having a mahogany-like finish, and you can see that with this super cool, like almost jet black color. And this is a fearsome weapon. You know, the flanged head, it widens up, so the center of gravity is up towards the top. That's going to aid in gaining momentum. That's going to do nasty damage against a mostly unarmored opponent. And then you've got the spike on the bottom, that, like, giant spike. There it is in detail. And, you know, whenever you're doing kind of any kind of overhand swing, if you run out of space because your opponent closes in too much, you just use the butt end with kind of a hammer fist blow. So this would certainly come in handy for that. You could also jab with it, of course, if you're in really close quarters. Now on to the main business end. Uh, sorry for the you know, low definition here on the pictures, but I had to use the ones that I was able to snap. Now, an analogous weapon from Europe would have these same edges, but they'd be metal. Well, they didn't have metal in the Solomon Islands traditionally, so that's why these are wood. And that would not stop them from messing you up. That was a terrible joke. Practical considerations aside, uh, it just has a really cool look at the head and, of course, the entire weapon. Like so many indigenous, ethnographic, you know, native, whatever you want to call them, weapons, uh, it's just beautiful. It has a just really uh, successful aesthetic to it, along with being quite functional. Speaking of that confluence of looks and functionality, the grips are just awesome. Look at that. It's great, and, of course, it's going to help you keep your grip. Oceanic culture, you know, warrior culture weapons like this were really popular with European collectors back in the 19th century, and you can see why. On to the next weapon. This is kind of a flattened club. Flattened hardwood club, very common throughout the kind of pre-colonial indigenous world. And I don't, of course, mean this exact shape. This one here is one-handed, obviously, and it's really wide. That's why it's probably, just, probably why it's described as a parrying club slash shield. And you can see how it would function that way. You get desperate, you turn that thing sideways, use the flat of the blade, if you will, to block the incoming strike. And while the flat can be used for blocking, the edge is, of course, for striking, and it reduces the impact to a very small surface area. I really love all three of these, but this is probably my favorite. It's the closest to you know, my specialty as far as an analogous weapon despite the fact that it might have been the least used of the three. And I say that because it's been described as a ceremonial staff, an executioner's baton, and I read that it was worn on the back. Don't know how true that was. I also read that that exquisite handle there was chambered nautilus shell, but also pearl handle. Well, either way, it's something fancy and something you put a lot of work into and took a lot of pride in. That lends weight to the idea that it was more of a prestige weapon, but I really don't know. I do, however, want to get my hands on one of these one day, if at all possible. Stunning to look at, and uh, no doubt stunning to be hit with, if it was in fact ever used that way. So you can see the braiding there on the head, and the part below it, and why that would remind me of Saps and Blackjacks so much. And that's it for these three, and those are the ones I wanted to focus on, but since we're touching on Solomon Island Warriors, we really couldn't make even this cursory video without touching on what's kind of the principal impact weapon, or at least the more common one. See that one up top? It's disappearing fast, I know, sorry. But then that one and this adjoining one, both marked with the number five here, these are two-handed paddle-shaped, so flattened clubs, similar to the one-handed one that we just saw. They're almost like a two-handed Native American rabbit leg club. And here's the one I got to see in person. So you see that raised ridge? That's really common. You know, they always, or almost always, flare away from the point of impact, but then this one has a point drawn out straight into what would be the target. And once again, visually stunning. Here's an incredible collection from back in the day. And a Solomon Island warrior with one in hand. Thanks.